Hi guys! My name is Anna Teke Adoga and today I'm going to be breaking down my 2022 national final round speech in informative speaking. For those of you who don't know, informative speaking is a category in which you pick a topic, it can be literally anything you want, and your goal is to inform your audience about it. Unlike other topics or other categories like extemporaneous speaking or original oratory, the goal of informative speaking isn't to persuade people so you don't have an argument, but rather you're trying to give people information or insight into a topic um, that they never would have thought of, and you're trying to find new facts and new information that can really wow the audience. So let's get started. I've made a lot of regrettable decisions in my life, like accidentally clicking yes on the have you ever been convicted of a crime section on the Common App, <laughs> or somehow using a number one pencil on my first ACT, and getting a zero. But they all pale in comparison to fifth grade, when my history teacher organized a Constitution Day to end the school year. I thought it was a costume party, it was not. And so I showed up to school fully dressed as Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> a black female Thomas Jefferson. Okay, so this is the first part of the speech. It's called your AGD or your attention getter. And the goal of this part of the speech is to get some laughs going, I would say. You're trying to introduce your speaking style and your overall topic to the audience. Now, I chose to do this with something that was a little bit funnier. So I talked about how I showed up to school dressed up as Thomas Jefferson when I was younger. Um, but you can do something that's a bit more serious or just share a story that has nothing to do with your actual topic. And then we will learn more about transitions later. We also see me use our first visual aid. And so for this visual aid, I cut a circle out of a foam board and then I put my picture on top of it so that I could show it to the audience. And you can get really creative with visual aids. This is my first handheld, but you'll see later in the video that I use big boards as well. And we'll get to that later. And for 10 year old Anna Take, that seemed like a funny mistake. And it was for about a week until June 17th, 2015, just 10 days later, when that costume took on a very different meaning for me. So here we see me pull out my first big board. And this board I constructed using black foam board and some other poster boards with pictures pasted onto them. I like to use bigger boards for more like important information so that people who are visual learners can see. And then the people who learn better when they're hearing can also listen to you while you're speaking. And so you'll see later that the board actually fo folds down and you can do that using a bunch of different methods. My favorite method is to use the big poster boards, like the foam ones, and then put on top of them the regular poster boards that you can get at like Target or Walmart for like 50 cents cut into them and then put the picture behind. As an armed white male walked into a historic South Carolina church and shot and killed nine black congregants, later telling officers that what he wanted was a race war and that he was inspired by the words of none other than Thomas Jefferson, the man often credited with the creation of one of the most controversial statements in American culture the Second Amendment. Now, this part of the speech is very important as it introduces your actual topic to the audience. As you can see, I slowed down my sentence just a little bit so that people could have time to digest what I was going to be talking about. My topic is obviously the Second Amendment, so I made sure to say the Second Amendment. And when you slow it down, it allows for people who have kind of gotten lost in the information to have a moment to catch up, and that it also allows you a moment to reset as you're about to dive into your information. As NPR notes on June 2nd, 2021, at a time when the Second Amendment is at the forefront of so many recent debates, understanding it has become nearly impossible, especially in a society that yells about the Second Amendment rather than talks. So today, we'll first take a look at the history of the amendment. Second, how it's shaped American identity before finally shining a light on some critical implications because as the American Bar Association notes on December 21st, 2021, 
this may be the most important topic in American history that no one knows a thing about. Okay, so that is the end of my introduction. And as you can see, I introduced my topic and then I introduced what I was going to be talking about throughout the entire speech. So I had my thesis statement in there. I explained that I was gonna be talking a bit about history and then a bit about the applications and then some implications later. And so it's really important to lay out that mapping for your audience because once again, this is a 10 minute speech so it can kind of get very information heavy. And for people who get lost in the words, this can be really helpful because it helps them follow along throughout the entire speech. 2008 was a pivotal year for people like me. The first Twilight movie came out. What, do you think I was gonna say Barack Obama? <laughs> oh, and also the second amendment was born. And no, that one's not a joke because as constitutional lawyer, Michael Waldman notes, the entire history of the Second Amendment, as we know it, is built around that year. Pre-2008. Like, way pre. So here we see me go into the history point. And so the goal of this transition was to transition us out of the original like opener and tell like your audience that you're going to be actually talking about the content that has to do with your topic. So I chose to transition out of my first like paragraph kind of out with a joke. And so I had people laughing and that was how it was comfortable for me to do it. But there are also other ways that you can do it. You don't have to use a joke. You could use an article and you could use a stat. It's really up to you. Once again, informative speaking has a lot of creativity and you have a lot of like creative liberties that you can like involve yourself in. You also have a lot of space to do whatever makes you feel comfortable. So if you're not comfortable with a joke, if you're not comfortable with a sentence, if you're not comfortable with a stat, don't say it. You are your best speaker when you're the most confident in yourself and you can only do that when you feel comfortable on stage. Way pre, like American Revolution pre. The colonists were primarily driven by two things. One, a hatred for colonization. Don't even get me started on the irony. And two, a distrust for organized militaries. Following the Haitian Revolution in August of 1791, where self-liberated slaves successfully overthrew French rule in Haiti, the colonists lost faith in government-backed militaries, blaming the revolt on the fact that the French military was armed, but French slave owners were not. So this is the first board that we see me use in the history point. And in your history point, you want to explain where the origin of your topic came from. You want to give people insight into what the topic is. And the biggest thing that, or the biggest piece of advice that I can give is that you want to approach your speech like you know nothing about it. When you're giving your informative speech, you should assume that people don't know anything about the topic. And so you're going to have to kind of spell it out for them at first because the worst thing would be if you were giving them tons of information, but they had no idea what you're talking about. And so I like to do that with a history point. And then I also add a board just so that people can, you know, catch up with the images, especially for those people who are visual learners. Attaching a picture to a stat can be really helpful so that there's different methods that people can absorb the information. As Waldman notes, that fact would serve as the basis for the Second Amendment passed only three months later. A well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. But it came with a catch. The colonists disliked the idea of open gun access. So they created armories where all the guns were stored and accessible only with prior official approval. So this was actually one of my favorite visual aids that we had in my piece. And I made it by putting, so you have the boards in the back, which is like the foam board, which is the base that you're going to be using. I use foam boards, but I wanna reiterate that there are really no rules when it comes to VAs. Do whatever makes you feel the most confident and you can get very creative with them. And so I pasted a picture on top and then I cut out another picture on the board and then pasted that on top so that when I flipped it down, the picture underneath would show through. And so I like to use that trick a lot. I used it in the beginning of the speech. I used it here and you can apply that anywhere because it allows you to have a visual aid for two different like sections in your speech while only having one board. So I highly recommend using that method. 
As Waldman notes, the Founding Fathers were inherently skeptical of private gun ownership and even created systems to limit it. And for over 200 years, the US Supreme Court agreed. Until 2008, when it ruled in DC v. Heller that the Constitution protects an individual right to firearm ownership. Post-2008, the conversation surrounding the amendment has been far more contentious. For instance, just a day after the Heller announcement, even the conservative-leaning Bill of Rights Institute called the decision the most significant reversal of precedent the court had ever made. So that is the end of my first history point. You want to pause a little bit before you transition out of your first point, just to give people a breather and allow them to absorb the information that you're telling them. Once again, informative speaking is about informing your audience. And so you have to be prepared that people are going to be like, wow, this is really cool information because they've never heard it before. So even if you're giving your speech 10 times over, you've practiced it a million times and you know every single word that's gonna come next, you have to really live in that experience with your audience because they've never heard this information before. And if you think that your topic is the coolest thing out there, I promise you, your audience will too. Clearly, when it comes to the Second Amendment, our interpretation has changed dramatically over the last two centuries. But perhaps its most significant impact isn't in what it says about rights, but rather how it redefined what it means to be American, both at home and abroad. As historian Carol Anderson notes in her 2021 book, The Second, Race and Guns in a Fatally Unequal America notes, while the Second Amendment's meaning is debatable, one thing isn't. It was never written to mean all people. Following emancipation in 1863, states across the South began enacting black codes, laws that, among other things, barred blacks from serving in the militia, meaning they couldn't exercise or protect the Second Amendment. As Waldman notes, that fact effectively prohibited freed blacks from identifying as American and allowed white mobs like the KKK to legally enter black homes, seize any illegally held weapons, and lynch anyone who fought back. As NPR notes, post-slavery laws depicted blacks as a threat to the security of a free state and made decades of violence seem simply constitutional. Or, as Anderson puts it, the Second Amendment made the lynching era possible. So we had the book VA, which is a VA that I was very excited about. I did this by using not foam boards, but actually like cardboard paper boards. And I put pictures on them and then I just like kind of pasted the pictures on the inside so that they would flip together. I loved using the book method because once again, it allowed me to have one VA that I could use for multiple sections of my speech. And it was also just something that was really cool. I like to just switch it up between handheld VAs and then VAs that go on your boards because it gives people something different to look at. And then also it allowed me an opportunity to really be interactive with my speech and like pull things off of the page and made it more fun to perform. The second VA that we see here is just a VA of a comparison from 2022 and 1936. I love using pictures like this when I'm referring to stats because it really shows that things have changed, but they haven't changed and it allows people to like think differently about the topic in their heads. Um, you're going to be analyzing a lot of aspects of your topic. For me, I was talking about something that was a little bit heavier. And so it was really essential for me to have pictures that people could easily digest. And using pictures that had side-by-side -side comparisons made it really easy for people who were visual learners to have that opportunity to digest that information. And that legacy of violence hasn't just shaped the face of America here. It's also altered perceptions of us around the globe. This past February, when Sandy Hook families reached a settlement with AR-15 manufacturer Remington, it seemed like a blow to the Second Amendment. But as the New Yorker notes, it wasn't. Shortly before Heller, Congress passed the PLCAA, a federal statute that prevents gun manufacturers and dealers from being sued if one of their guns was used in a crime. And for nearly 15 years, the law has gone unchallenged. 
until August of last year when Mexico announced. So if you didn't see that, it was kind of fast. I used the news like template that you can see on Google when you search up like New York Times and I changed the headlines. So how I did that was I found two different articles that related to what I was talking about, but I made sure that they were from the same source. So both of the articles that I used were from the New York Times and then I formatted them so that they would be the same size and then I cut out the like heading so that I could flip it down later. I thought this was a super cool idea because it allowed me to once again, have a VA that I could use for multiple sections of my speech. But also I like using like the news line um, format for VAs because it gives your speech a bit of credibility because it shows that you got it from an actual source. And so when I was looking for VA ideas, this was something that I came back to because it's really easy to make. And it also is just like very pleasing to the eye. I highly recommend that if you are going to make this that you use the ceramic magnets you can get them at Home Depot, Lowe's, or any hardware store. And if you get them, make sure you get the really small ones, the discs, so that you can put them behind the paper. That way, when you fold it back up, the magnets don't make the paper not stick together. When Mexico announced a $10 billion lawsuit suing American gun manufacturers for drug trade violence. And last month, 13 U.S. states signed letters in support of Mexico. As the LA Times notes, this case could effectively undermine not just the Second Amendment, but the entire American Union by aligning states with a foreign power against American industry, all in the name of guns. Now, I've talked a lot about visual aids, and I want to emphasize that visual aids are something that are going to enhance your speech, but ultimately it's going to come down to the content that's in your speech that can really help you. And so when you're looking for sources, when you're looking for information that you want to put in your speech, I kind of say if you Google something and it pops up on the first page, I would kind of stay away from that. The goal of info is to kind of give people this like wow factor like oh my gosh I never knew that because they didn't know that before and when you're digging for information you really want to go deep and kind of look at it in a perspective that you never would have thought of the stat that I found about Mexico and the U.S. and the 13 different states that were siding with Mexico really shocked me when I was researching it so that I knew and that's how I knew that other people would also be shocked and so Keeping different stats in different places throughout your speech can help you with that wow factor, especially when you get to that like six minutes, seven minutes when people have been listening to you talk for a while. You want to keep them engaged the entire time. So adding stats in there that really would blow your mind can really help you keep your audience engaged. And yet, that industrial aspect is crucial to understanding the role that guns play in society and presents a critical implication about the Second Amendment. Changing, repealing, or altering it in any way ignores a glaring financial fact. While gun violence wreaks havoc on communities, it is great for our country's economy. So here we see me start talking about the impacts of gun violence on the United States' economy. Now, this took a lot of digging to find the information and the sources that would help me reinforce this point. And that kind of goes for all of the information that I found for my speech. When you're researching, researching, I highly recommend that you visit like academic journals and books because as much as I hate to admit it, I did spend a lot of time reading for this speech and it really helped me out a lot because there's a lot of times things that are simplified on articles that don't really like pop as much because it's information that you've probably already known. And so if you can go into academic journals, books, um, Google Scholar is a great resource. I love using that. And it can help you find different information and different lenses that people have discussed about your topic so that you can really have the best information possible. As a Stanford Law Journal noted in April of 2019, every time a mass shooting makes headlines, gun sales around the country spike nearly 20%, with sales in neighboring counties and states increasing almost 50%. As the Washington Post notes, that fact has a direct benefit on our bottom line, with publicly traded gun manufacturers seeing an almost 15% increase in stock prices in the weeks following a mass shooting. 
So here you see me pull out the same VA that I used at the beginning for a different point and then pull the covers with that I attached with magnets to showcase numbers behind. I love putting stats as visual aids as well because sometimes when you're talking numbers dates times can all get like lost in the translation because you're talking so fast and so when you have the numbers on the board it helps people to remember like oh this is 20 percent that's still there or 50 percent or 15 percent and so it doesn't get lost in your speech i also want to emphasize that you can reuse your vas for other parts of your speech if you use it one time and you also get to a point in your speech and you realize that, oh my gosh, this would look really cool here, or I want to add something behind this VA so that I can use it at this point, that is totally okay and I highly recommend it because one, it makes it so you have less boards on your VA stand so that they don't fall forward. And then also, it's also just a great way to save money because you don't have to make things multiple times. So if you can, I would really try to combine your VAs, not so that you have less, but so that they're more concise. Perhaps the New York Times on May 26, 2022 puts it best. When our collective conscience is focused on the devastating impacts of a mass shooting, our appetite for investment shrinks. And so our economy should face a downturn. But that rarely happens because the Second Amendment keeps the stock market afloat. Finally, in a year where America is averaging 1.5 mass shootings per day, the rhetoric around the Second Amendment may be more important than ever. So here we see me kind of approaching the end of the speech. Um, I want to once again bring our attention to the fact that you are not trying to persuade people um, your entire informative speech. That's not the goal. Throughout this entire thing, I never say we should or we must or we have to because I'm informing people about the Second Amendment, but I'm not giving them my personal thoughts on the Second Amendment. I'm giving them research that I found and I've given them, you know, stats from other academic journals that I found. I've given them quotes from books that I've read. And the goal is to just kind of give people a comprehensive review on a topic that you pick. So if it makes you think about it in a different way, think of informative speaking as kind of an advanced book report on a topic. You're going to be researching this topic for your entire speech season, and so I highly recommend picking a topic that's personal to you and something that you can see yourself speaking about for, I would say, three to six months because you never know how long you're going to be talking about it. And honestly, I think it's so much more fun to watch people talk about stuff that they're genuinely passionate about. So pick something that speaks to you and pick something that makes you excited because it'll make you more excited to make VAs. It'll make you more excited to talk about it. And it'll honestly make every single tournament that much more exciting because you're talking about something that you really care about. In 2019, researchers at Arizona State University noticed a trend. For every mass shooting with four or more deaths, a wave of similar shootings seemed to follow almost immediately after, something they termed the Second Amendment domino effect. I want to bring your attention to this domino VA, not because I think that it's super flashy or super cool, but because I think it's a very good representation of what these VAs are supposed to do. I myself am a very visual learner and so when people are talking or I'm reading sometimes I can get lost in the words but having something like this where I can be like oh this is the second amendment domino effect and then seeing the dominoes helps me connect the ideas so that later on when I'm remembering points from the speech I can think about the image and then think about the line that went along with that image and that way I remember everything that's in the speech. Their analysis of the manifestos from every mass shooting since 2009 revealed in almost every single one praise for the Second Amendment and a defense of white supremacy. As The Atlantic notes on February 15th, 2022, it's possible that the Second Amendment has become nothing more than a Trojan horse for white supremacy. And if that's the case, it begs the question, is it possible that having productive discussions about the Second Amendment is so difficult because we aren't ready or able to discuss whether white supremacy is just part of being American. Now, this is something that I love to do when I was giving my speeches and informative speaking. I love asking questions in my speech because once again, the goal is to get people to think. 
you're getting people one exposed to new information but you're also challenging them to expand their perspective on what they thought they knew about this topic so once you get to your implications which is the third point Asking your audience questions is totally allowed. Let them sink in the information that they just got, but then also let them start thinking about new ways that they can think about the topic. I think that questions are a good way to probe some thinking, but also a good way to make sure that like, you're not persuading anyone, you're just giving them some food for thought. In 1967, California passed the Mulford Act as a response to the Black Panthers who began patrolling city streets to protect black neighborhoods from growing police violence. The act banned, in its entirety, the open carry of weapons. And its biggest supporter? The NRA. So as you can see, I've entered the last kind of tidbit of my speech. This is the conclusion portion, and I snuck in just one more cool fact to have people go like, wow, that's super cool, and remember what my topic is about. Um, I also did not use any VAs in my conclusion because I really wanted to people to focus on me speaking because at the end of the day, like this is a speaking activity. We want to hear you talk and we want to hear your thoughts. And so when you're transitioning out of your third point, there's no like net, you don't have to have VAs in your last point. If you do, that's great. But just remember, like you have so much creativity and in informative speaking. The rules are solid, but they're also very fluid. Do whatever feels best for you. And the NSCA has so many resources. So if you really, really want to get into your event, I would suggest watching the videos that they have posted and watching a lot of final round videos because that's how I got better. And it allowed me to see how people were making their VAs. It allowed me to see how people were structuring their speeches. And it overall just made me feel more confident. So yeah. Who convinced then governor Ronald Reagan to sign the bill into law and then provided him with the organization's first ever endorsement for president. Clearly, when it comes to the Second Amendment, its place in America is not only complicated, but it's also constantly changing. And that's one Constitution Day lesson we can all learn. So that is the end of the speech. At the end, you saw me restate what I talked about throughout the entire speech. I talked about the history point, the applications, and the implications. And then I also brought it full circle by talking about my initial AGD about how I came to school dressed up as Thomas Jefferson. When you c draw it back to the beginning of your speech and you know use your AGD to close it out, it makes the speech feel more complete. And so when you're picking a story that you want to use as a device to help move your speech along, pick something that you can see making a lot of references to because it's not just going to stay at the beginning it's also going to be referenced at the end so make sure that you like the story and that you like what you have to talk about overall that is informative speaking i hope that you guys found this video really helpful and just know that be your most authentic self speech is an activity in which everyone all shapes and sizes different colors different races ethnicities everyone can come together and talk about something that's important to them so choose a topic that you're really excited about i know that everyone watching this video is going to be amazing this year and i can't wait to see what you guys put together thank you for watching bye